Hey guys and welcome to this week's webinar. So I wanted to touch on something that I have seen has uh, developed particularly within myself but also the people that I work with whether that's uh, kind of face to face or online over the last few months and that is overwhelm. So um, if you're watching this in uh, months and months and months time we're in the middle of kind of coming out of uh, our lockdown shall we say we've still got a partial lockdown in terms of dealing with COVID-19 and it has just really kind of picked up everyone's lives thrown it up in the air and we're constantly trying to see what bits of it we can catch to kind of resemble some normal um, or keep things ticking along so what I wanted to do is touch on the fact that whilst coaching with me we have three things that we are trying to achieve daily slash weekly so we've added things in and what I want to do is try and help you come up with a plan to just deal with overwhelm in general kind of COVID-19 or not any given day of the week for any week that you feel it so addressing overwhelm initially so for me I tend to find I feel it most if I'm if I've got too much going on in my head and I'm trying to think oh, I need to do that oh, I must remember to do that oh, I need to remember to do this and I'm trying to create this list and then I'm, I'm building a level of anxiety, I'm running around, I go to go to sleep and I'm like, oh shit, didn't remember that, forgot that, haven't messaged so-and-so, haven't checked in with so-and-so and it just goes and goes and goes. And I have, I'll be honest, this week massively, massively struggled with it. So I was like, right, I'm going to pull myself together, I'm going to follow the tactics that I use and I'm going to share them with you guys. I know I've shared them a little bit with some of you already in the hope that it helps over the next coming weeks and in months and weeks from now whether you're staying on with online coaching or not. So my number one tip for kind of coping and dealing with overwhelm is stop, breathe, put pen to paper, okay? And there's one thing that I want you to do when it comes to putting pen to paper and that is write a list. And this list is not designed to scare you in any way. It's not designed to make you feel like there's too much to do on it because we're going to break it down in a second. But what it's designed to do is to get everything out of your head. Every single thing, even if you need to remember to load the dishwasher, as well as things you've got to do at work, as well as picking up cat food, dog food, as well as walking the dog, whatever it is. On any given day that you're struggling to cope with this and you kind of feel like you're drowning in things, stop, breathe and put pen to paper write down your list get every single thing out of your head okay this list that you're trying to remember this kind of overwhelmed feeling of too much to do and too little time we're then going to address that how are we going to address that three numbers one two and three you're going to prioritize that list okay number ones are urgent so they are time critical urgent they're important they're of high importance they need doing and only I can do it, okay? Nobody else can go and do that. So that's a one. Super time critical, super important that it gets done in in the thing that we're doing, it's important, and only you can do it. So it's not like you can delegate anywhere. Number two, needs doing and only I can do it, okay? So it's, it's important, but we've not quite given it an important status, but it's something that needs doing. It's not urgent, it's not super time critical, but only you can do it. So at some point we've got to do it, okay? Number three is not time critical in any way, shape or form. It's something you might like to do or might like to get round to doing. Can you delegate it? Is there the opportunity to delegate it? If not, it falls three bottom of the pile, okay? One thing I want to stress on this is, say for example, you have 30 things on your list, okay? That's a huge number, I know, okay? Chances are, most of us actually, when we start clearing our head, won't have 30 things on our list, okay? Because we can chunk some, and I'm gonna talk about time chunking in a second. But say we've got 30 things on our list, we can only give ourselves three ones. From there, we can only give ourselves five twos, and then technically speaking, Everything else becomes a three, but once it's written down, chances are you'll bin a few things off, okay? You'll go, actually, 
that doesn't even need to be on my list. It's not an essential that it gets done. Do you know, it might be things like, and that does fall a little bit by the wayside in my house, bathrooms. You know, I don't live in a dirty house whatsoever, okay? But eventually, for a while, they go off that way. It might be a couple of days. Once it's, you know, been a week, it might creep in on a three. Then give it eight or nine days, it turns into a needs doing. And then if it's been two weeks, then they come up to the list. So you can see how certain things you can bin off this way, but eventually they will become something that gets added to the list and then it's where you sit them. But you can only ever give yourself three ones and five twos, okay? So there is only ever gonna be three things on any list that are super duper urgent, they are super important and only you can do them. Don't get me wrong, there'll be twos that you'll go, oh, that could be a one, could be a two. If it could be a one and it could be a two, it's a two. If it could potentially be a three, or maybe a two, it's a three, okay? If it's not even needed as a three, let's bin it off the list, okay? But you can only give yourself on any given day eight things maximum, okay? Maximum. And from those eight things, you will always tick off at least two of them, at least, and then at least three of them, okay? So then that's five things a day. Okay, but then it comes to be it then comes to eating the frog. Okay, so making sure you're getting some of these urgent, time critical, and only you can do them things out of the way as soon as you can. Okay, how can we do that? Well, it's about blocking out time. Okay, I'm a big believer in looking at my diary, and as anal as it might sound, if I plan on I don't know, playing cards and, and cooking a nice dinner with Miss, I'll block that in on Friday evening. So I'm not tempted to overlay work into that Friday evening. Okay, or, and that becomes something that I want to do in terms of, for my relationship, it might not necessarily fall on this list, but it's about blocking time for things that are important. Okay, so we're going to block out time. As we did in a couple of webinars ago, we know how long we're working for. We know how long it takes to travel to work. We know chances are that a couple of these things that are ones and twos are going to be about work, okay? So we can spend the day ticking things off. Now, if there's one one that you need to do at home, we get that done when we get home first, okay? And from there, we filter things through, okay? But it's about breaking things down and time chunking them. The three things that I've generally asked you guys to do every single week is follow your training program, track your food, and complete your check-ins honestly and keeping them up to date, okay? They're not three things that need to be done daily, but they're three things that need to be done through the week. So straight away, you can see here that following your training program on your rest day, well, that's not important in the slightest, as long as you stick to your rest day. Following your training program on a Saturday, if you've got big lifts in the gym, that then becomes immediately, your Saturday morning becomes a one, getting your training session in, okay? That would be one of your ones for the day. You can tick that straight away, you've eaten the frog. Depending on how you work with tracking your food, two minutes at every meal or five minutes at the end of the day. I prefer two minutes at every meal. It then doesn't even, after a while, become something that goes on my list. It will just be a habit that gets done, okay? If generally you're leaving it a couple of days before you're tracking food, chances are you'll find it has to come on your list. So this is where we can start to break things down and look at how best can habits serve things to try and reduce this number so when we clear out our brain, we have 10 things. Then maximum, we're taking three ones and five twos again. And it's about clearing down our brain to reduce this, but also in time, reducing the number of things that we put on the list, okay? Things like check-ins, you know that's every Sunday. So every Sunday, that for yourself will become a two or a one to get it done in time, but it doesn't need to sit in there every single day. It doesn't need to be necessarily on the brain every single day, depending on how you're filling the sheet. So that's just me giving you examples around the coaching side of things, okay? When it comes to life, we've got, you know, cleaning, chores, work, dog, picking up cat food, dog food, all sorts of things going on, time with partner, time with husband, contacting so-and-so, sorting out car insurance, all sorts of things, okay? And it's about making sure, for example, something like car insurance. You've had your renewal come through. You've got 30 days to sort out your renewal. 
If you keep that in your mind, that's going to start building up these things that are going to fill up our brain and create overwhelm. I would just simply go to a diary, put it in on a certain date, that's when it becomes a one. So you've almost shelved it out of here and you've said on Monday the 23rd of September, seven days before my renewal, that's when I'm going to go for it. So it's just about manipulating, blocking out time, stopping, breathing, putting pen to paper whenever you feel like overwhelm and life is getting away from you and breaking down what even really needs to be on this list, okay? What actually needs to be there and what can you just get done without it necessarily adding any overwhelm to your day and then turning that into three ones maximum, five twos and binning things off if we can to come onto the list at a later date. So that's my top tip for dealing with overwhelm. Uh, I'm going to do a podcast on it as well in a couple of weeks, but I just wanted to put a visual up for you guys, just in case any of you are kind of struggling with balancing work, with balancing training, with balancing life and things like that as we come through the last few weeks of this first block. If you've got any questions, as always, ping me a message and I'm going to give you a choice in this email for next week. So have a great weekend, guys. Keep smashing it.